we're no longer the primitive church and and uh, so therefore a lot of the things that you read in Acts have ceased to happen like they happened in those days and I, I would submit that in the day that you and I live is just as godless as it was in the first century and uh, and it's uh, we are we are dealing with the same kind of spirit that Jesus dealt with when he came into the world uh, same uh, it was very evil very evil very immoral very godless there was a lot of witchcraft and demonic activity going on and that's what we're seeing in our day uh, so I've come to talk to you tonight a little bit about the supernatural what God wants to do and uh, is going to do it's not a question that he's going to do it uh, some people believe that the church is uh, there's a great falling away some people preach that uh, if you study the Word of God uh, it's, it's deeper than just people in the church falling away it's it's a world that's fallen away from God in great rebellion and we're seeing that today as God gets little credit for what he's done and it's and man has become the very center of everything hey just just hang out with him I, I know I know where I'm going you know and, and I, I'll do my best not to put you to sleep <clears throat> but uh, Anytime man begins to become exalted, uh, just it's going to get bad. Uh, we're, we are not getting better, all right? As mankind as a whole is not getting better. We're not on a road to conquering all our problems, and it, it's, it's getting worse, you know. And, and America has tried many different programs they have stuck millions and millions of dollars into social areas to try to bring about change and and it's not got better uh, we live in a nation where drugs are rampant on every every ba every strata of society drugs are rampant and uh, people turn to them, and they're very destructive. Uh, we deal with people that come in here, amen, and, and I want you to know tonight that you nor I can set them free, all right? And let, me, let me just lay this out there for you, too. If they really don't want God, you nor I can help them, all right? And we need to discern that, because we do have people that come in here and they want help, but their help has nothing to do with changing and following God. And they'll give a certain amount of lip service to that. And again, in some places, that's enough window dressing to get them by. But uh, we as believers need to have the ability to discern where people are at. All right? Amen. Otherwise, we'll be deceived. Uh, we have got to learn to depend upon the Spirit of God. Uh, we, we, we've got to be just like uh, Joshua should have been when Gabash sent down uh, some ambassadors and they're all in rags and moldy bread and just looking awful and proceeded to tell them they had come on a long journey and uh, instead of seeking God, they, they actually covenanted with these J Jabez Gilead and eventually found out that they were lying. And, but yet now they were covenanted, so there was nothing they could do to change that. Uh, I think what we need to do, brothers and sisters, is learn to depend upon the Spirit of God. All right? We spend very little time praying about decisions. All right. I don't think it's a problem for you to say 
to somebody that comes up and asks for your help or, or has questions and say, you know what, before I can give you an answer, I need to pray. Okay? I know I'm talking to people that got wisdom and understanding, but I, we really need to connect with our God in these areas. Otherwise, we are capable of being deceived. All right? And so I, I want to talk to us a little bit this evening about this area of the supernatural. Going back to the Old Testament, if you'd go back to 2 Kings chapter 2, verse number 14, we'll just start there and, and we'll move from there. The Bible says, Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that, and Elisha crossed over. Amen. What we've just read to you, we see a man that has been changed. We see a man that has gone through a process, amen, to where God can work through him. Hallelujah. Amen. The word for Elijah in the Septuagint simply tells us, Yah is God. And if you'll think back into the Old Testament, you'll remember that it was Elijah that challenged the prophets of Baal, amen, of, to answer their God to answer by fire. And of course, God answered through fire. Amen. And they know that Elijah's God was God. Just, just hang out with me. I'm, go, just, I'm going slow, but just hang out with me. Amen. You need to have an understanding of who God is. All right. You really do. You need to be able to explain the oneness of God, who God is. Amen. There is in this world a, a great uh, covering of this area, and people need light. They need to understand. And, and you say, well, that can get me into debate. It may get you into debate. Amen. But it wouldn't be the first time that there's been a debate about who God is. And Elijah's name, and Yah is God. And of course, God worked through that. <coughs> Amen. He was the prophet during the time of Ahab, who was a very wicked man. Amen. And, uh, and then, of course, Elisha began to follow Elijah. And his name literally means God is salvation. Now, you get into the New Testament. In fact, there's only one place in the New Testament at all where you'll read the name Elisha. You will read Elijah, but you will not read Elisha. And the one place in the Scripture where it talks about Elisha, it also talks about Elijah. Amen. And that's in the fourth chapter of Luke where Jesus stands up in the synagogue in Nazareth and he reads from Isaiah, and he talks about the anointing of God being upon him. And amen. And in fact, let's just go there. Go to verse uh, 17 of uh, Luke chapter 4. Are y'all still with me? Y'all had a rough day today. Amen. Y'all tired. Amen. Just, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Everybody say, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. You got the Holy Ghost tonight. Do you have the Holy Ghost tonight? If you got the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God is on you. Are you, are you hearing me? All right. Amen. Because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and proclaim liberty to, to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Amen. The Spirit of God was active. Amen. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, in both the ministry of Elijah and Elisha, judgment took place. Okay. If you read in First King or Second Kings chapter one, you will see that. Amen. They the king sent. A messenger with 15 soldiers, amen, and they got close to the prophet of God, and 
and fire fell and it's gone. And that happened twice and then the third guy, he comes and he cries out for mercy and he gets mercy. Amen. You'll also read that Elisha, in the very next chapter, when he is anointed, amen, there are those that mock him. And she bears come out. And, and they bring judgment, okay? I'm saying that because none of that is mentioned in Luke 4. Amen. So both of these men, God brought judgment through their ministries. But Jesus didn't talk about judgment. He talked about being set free. He talked about healing. Amen. In fact, what got Jesus in trouble in Nazareth is when he suggested, amen, that Gentiles could also receive the mercies of God. When he mentioned the widow at Zarephath, and he talked about the fact that, amen, Naaman, amen, was healed of his leprosy. Praise God. And so the fact that Jesus notes these men, it, it causes me to give them attention. These prophets of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will find in chapter 2 of 2 Kings four geographical locations that uh, take place in this process of Elijah going up into heaven. Hallelujah. Four places. And uh, it becomes very evident early in the chapter that God is going to do something great. In fact, when you read it, you will see that the sons of the prophets or the prophets came to Elisha and they would say to him, hey, do you know what God's going to do today? He said, I know, I know, I know, I know. Amen. But I would like to focus for just a, f a few moments on these geographical areas, amen, that you'll find in the second chapter of Second Kings. Amen. In Second Kings chapter 2 and verse 1, we begin reading here and we find out that before Elijah went up in a whirlwind, they had went, he went, excuse me, Elisha went with him, or they came out of, excuse me, Gilgal. I'll get it right. They came out of Gilgal. Now just hang out with me for just a few moments. Gilgal was a, a unique place for the Israelites, okay? It was at Gilgal that Israel first crossed the Jordan River, and that was where they first camped. It was at Gilgal where the 12 memorial stones were taken from the bed of the river and set up upon the shore, amen, indicating the miraculous separation of the water. It was also at Gilgal, amen, that the children of Israel were circumcised, amen, preparing them to go in to receive the possession of of the land. Okay, just, just hang out with me. In fact, Joshua would say, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. It was that Gilgal? And so if I could just talk to you for a few moments. Gilgal was a place, amen, where Israel made a noticeable change. If you read through their experience in the wilderness. They continually complained. In fact, they had a lot to say about Egypt. And when you read what they say about Egypt, they never bring out anything negative. They don't talk about their male sons drowning in the Nile. They don't talk about, amen, the beatings that they had to go through. They don't talk about all the ridicule. They don't talk about uh, just being, just made less than human. That never comes up. What, what comes up is this desire to go back to Egypt. You know, to go back to the melons and the leeks and the onions and 
numerous times they will say, I wish we were in Egypt. But it's at Gilgal. You'll not read them talking about anybody wanting to go back to Egypt. Now it's to go into Canaan, to the land flowing with milk and honey. You see, Gilgal was a separation for Israel from Egypt, which in the Scripture, majority of the time is considered the world or sin. The Bible would speak of Abraham going down into Egypt and coming up out of Egypt. Amen. And so that's where this ministry begins for Elisha. Hallelujah. At Gilgal. It's at Gilgal that the determination is made that we're going to serve God. It's at Gilgal that it's clear and understandable that you cannot serve two masters. It's at Gilgal that, amen, you come to that place of understanding that I am a child of God. Amen. This world is not my home. As the song says, I'm just passing through. It's at Gilgal, amen, where God's people have separated themselves from their world. They don't want to be like their world. They don't want to think like their world. They don't want to act like their world. They don't want to dress like their world. Amen. They want to be children of God. It's at Gilgal. If you want the supernatural power of God to work in you, you got to go to Gilgal. You got to make up your mind whom you are going to serve. You really do. If you got one foot in the church and one foot out the door, amen, God can't work through you in that kind of a position or place. Amen. Do you understand that this world is passing away? It's lust. Everything about it is going to pass away. Amen. It's at Gilgal that they made the determination. Amen. We're going into a new land. We don't care about Egypt anymore. The biggest struggle the church has today, amen, is not the devil. The biggest struggle the church has today is we haven't made up our mind yet, amen, what side we're really on. We are much like it was during the days of Elijah when Elijah would say to them, why why can't you make a decision? You can't determine right now, amen, that God is God. You want God's power to work through you? You have got to separate yourself from this world. Amen. I'm not talking about you can't take a vacation. I'm talking about its mores, its precepts, its concepts, how it thinks. Do you understand? Amen. The Bible says that Lot was a righteous man. But Lot was troubled every day or vexed every day by what he saw going on in Sodom. Amen. When you're out there and you see that side that's not living for God and you haven't made up your mind, it puts you in that vexed and troubled state. Amen. That unsettled state. I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. My approval does not come from my world. The approval that I want comes from Him. That's what happens at Gilgal. And brothers and sisters, every church in America is fighting a spirit of worldliness and a spirit of coming in. Amen. Why? Because they know, the enemy knows if he can get you. Come on. Some of you are already judging people for how they dress in this house. Amen. And your spirit can stink. And you don't even understand that that's the spirit, not of God, but of this world and the enemy who has always been one that condemned and criticized and tore down. Hallelujah. Oh, God. My God. I was with a man recently who has been out of the ministry for some time. And he told me a very incredible story. 
Uh, he worked in the prison system, the federal prison system, with men that are very evil. Many of them are locked away for the rest of their lives. And he walked into a segregated area. And there was a man sitting on the top bunk. It was, I guess, time for lunch. I remember right. And uh, the man sitting up there all of a sudden says to this man, what are you doing here, preacher? Okay, now, I'm just telling you, the guy sitting on the top of that bunk, it wasn't a man that had understanding that I mean, he knew the credentials of this man or his background. It was a demonic spirit that was mocking him. Ladies and gentlemen, I say to us tonight, amen, you want God's power working in your life, you can't work on both sides of the fence. I'm not saying this man was, I'm just telling you, you can't work on both sides of the fence. And it's at Gilgal. Amen. It starts at Gilgal. Amen. Where, amen, Elisha and Elijah make some decisions as we need to make decisions. It's at Gilgal. You still with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Surprisingly, it's at Gilgal that David is welcomed back after the rebellion of his son Absalom. It's at Gilgal. A nation that had followed a man who tried to take over his father's throne. It was at Gilgal they made up their mind and they welcomed David back to the throne. I'm just focusing on Gilgal for just, you, you got to understand this. You want the supernatural power of God to work in your life. You want, you want God to be active in you. You have got to make up your mind. Okay. I, I just, I just, I got to say something here. There's, there's people in this audience that have a very judgmental spirit. The holiness of God has nothing to do with that spirit. Nothing to do with it. It's hard to wrap your brain around Jesus saying to a woman who's been caught in an act of adultery and hearing the words that come out of his mouth, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. You see, the spirit of Jesus is not a critical spirit. Now, believe it or not, you may not think that that's holy, but it is very holy. Because you can damage people with an attitude. You understand? You understand that, brothers? You can damage people with an attitude. You really can. You can destroy people with an attitude. You got an attitude. In fact, may I say something to you? If you've got an attitude, you need to ask yourself, well, just how much mercy do I need? And if you say a little bit, man, you're a fool. This preacher needs a whole lot of mercy. A whole lot of mercy. I'm talking about Gilgal right now, making up our mind, who we're going to serve, how we're going to live, what our philosophy is going to be. Amen. I remember drawing a line many years ago in my own personal life, and I, I, I can't spend too much more time in Gilgal. I got to move on. But I remember, amen, I used to have a mustache, a Fu Manchu. When I came back to God, I didn't cut my mustache. And if you got a mustache, I don't care. You know, but I'm just talking about me right now, right? And uh, and I I probably shared this before with you, and and the reason I had a mustache because I've I've always looked younger than I am. You know, and I got tired of being called Opie. Some of you don't know who Opie is. And uh, and so I grew a mustache, and having that mustache fit me in with everybody. You understand? And when I came back to God, I, I went up to our church camp, and and uh, again, people, 
If, if all you ever judge people by is what you see on the outside, your judgment's faulty. In fact, it's not righteous judgment. I'm just telling you right now, it is not righteous judgment. If all you ever judge is the outside, it's not righteous judgment. Okay. And so uh, I'm up at camp, you know, and I'm loving God, and God's dealing with me. Because he's, he knows why I have that mustache. Not that it made me look better or good or more handsome. Or, it, was, it was because I wanted it to fit in. All right? And so I went and I cut it off. I haven't had one since. I've been tempted to grow. I may just grow it just to irritate some people. I may even grow a beard sometimes just to irritate some people. And no, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I, I got to behave here. I got to have a right spirit, right attitude. And uh, I remember a minister approaching me. He thought that up at camp that I had finally come back to God. But the truth was I had already come back to God. But I was allowing God to deal with my spirit and my heart. And so I cut that mustache off because I wanted the people that I work with to clearly understand that I ain't on your side. Now, if you don't understand what I'm saying, then I'm sorry. And you know what? They recognize. They ask me why I cut my mustache off. They ask me. Amen. You see, what, what it was steeped in was I belong to God. And I want a clear line, a distinctive line between me and my world. All right? And that's, that's what happens at Gilgal. Gilgal, you draw a line there. Who are you going to serve? <laughs> I know a lot of people, and I, I, I have to move on. I know a lot of people, amen, you only do what the pastor wants you to do. And if the pastor's gone, then you'll do what you want to do. And I submit to you, you haven't been to Gilgal. I make some of you uncomfortable today. You haven't been to Gilgal. You got to get it for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. My God. Well, the pastor don't like it. Well, you need to go to Gilgal until you don't like it. Amen. And so that's where this journey begins. And then you'll read in the scripture here that they went from there to Bethel. All right? Went to Bethel. You'll see that in verse number two. They went to Bethel. All right? And again, all this time, Elijah seems like he's trying to get rid of Elisha. He's just trying to get Elisha to draw a line. Where are you going to be in this thing, Elisha? At Bethel, it's, it's different, all right? Bethel, is, that's the place where Jacob went one night, had a dream, saw angels ascending, and he said, saw the Lord, wakes up, and he, he says, truly the Lord was in this place, and I didn't even know it. And he anoints a rock and calls that place Bethel. Hallelujah. You see, it's at Bethel, that God begins to speak to us. And it's at Bethel that we begin to speak to God. Hallelujah. Are you, are you with me? It's to Bethel, or at least that proximity, that Abraham would go after he'd gone down to Egypt without talking to God. And when he came back, he went back to where he first made an altar. It was at or around that region of Bethel. It was in the region of Bethel. That Abraham and Lot were up there in that high place and, and they're discussing which direction they're going to go. Amen. And, and Abraham says, you make the choice. And Lot makes the choice of the Willwater Plains of Jordan. That's up there at that region of Beth. See, somebody there wasn't talking to God. Are, are you hearing me? Bethel is a place where God talks to you and you talk to God. Hallelujah. If we think that we can move our world, amen, through money and through expertise and intelligence and, 
education where it's not going to do the job. It takes the supernatural power of God. It takes somebody talking to God. Hallelujah. And God talking to somebody. I, I was praying recently, meditating, and saying, God, we're struggling. We're struggling with, with just a spirit of apathy. And, and, and uh, I don't have an answer, God. What do I do? do I, should I beat the people up? You know, I, I got this position up here. I got a mic. Hey, Amen. I come in here and just chastise you, wail on you till the sun comes up, and, and you'll all be upset with me and offended. Now, what, what am I going to do, God? What, what, what should I do? I, I, I really don't know what to do. And uh, I waited. Because, you know, if you ask God questions, you need, you need to at least hang around until you get an answer. You, you understand? Do you understand that it's not unique? God doesn't just talk to preachers. He'll talk to you. But one of the things we do is we're too quick to get up and too quick to leave his presence. We just need to stay a while. Amen. And, that, and that's what it did. I stayed a while, Nicole. I just hung around. I, I just got no place to go. And he ain't answered me. And he may not answer me. But I'm going to hang around and see what he'll do. And as I waited and waited, the answer came to me. I know it's going to be so profound for you. You know what he said to me? Preach the word. Wait a minute, God. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Preach the word. That's all I really needed then. Because you see, that's direction for me. And so by the grace of God, I am going to preach the word to you folks. And sometimes you may not appreciate what I say, but understand, I am not here to destroy anybody. I'm not here to tear somebody down. I'm here to help my brothers and sisters get close to God so that God can work through them, that God can meet their need, and God can power can. I mean, we can come in the house and say, hey, I want to hear your testimony about how God used you the other day. I want to hear about, hey, amen, that person that you prayed for they received the holy ghost right there in their living room and there was nobody else there from the church but you and jesus so we went to gilgal At gilgal we started drawing lines and in bethel we uh we talked to god and god talked to us and we started seeing things that uh were different uh Bible tells us they left Bethel and they went, verse 4, down to Jericho. All right? So we've gone from Gil... Are you still with me? Gilgal to Bethel. Now he's in Jericho. Now, Jericho, hang out with me now. You see, it's at Jericho that uh, Joshua was seeking God. How are we going to take this city? And God says to him, okay, here's how we're taking the city. I want you to march around the walls one day. I want you to put the Ark of the Covenant, get the soldiers and get the people, and, just, and don't say a word. All right, all right, God, that's great. All right, so what do we do next? Well, tomorrow, come up, do the same stuff. Okay, this is really exciting here. Am I hearing from God here or what? I'm not a pacifist, God. I'm here to take Jericho, God. I don't know, you know, are, you, are we going to make these people dizzy? I'm marching. And what are we doing the third day, God? Because obviously the third day is going to, third day, man, three, three, where's three? Three, three's got to be the number here. Third day. No, nothing. We're just doing the same stuff we did on the other two days and four days and five days and six days and seven days. Seven days. Now today, we're marching seven times around the wall. Okay, God. Boy, a preacher doing that, he's going to get himself nice and trim, isn't he? He's marching around Jericho, man. And then on the seventh time, you are going to blow the trumpets and you're going to shout. All right. Now, hear me. 
You see what Jericho is? Jericho is a place where God speaks to us in ways our flesh do not understand. Are, are you with me? You know, you know, you know that you know that voice that talked to you at that time and told you to do something. And you said, "This is absolutely crazy. I ain't paying attention to this. Are you nuts?" You, you, you know that voice. That that voice. That voice that that the flesh is never impressed by. In fact, that that that, that voice. That voice. That voice. You see, if you haven't gone to Gilgal and you haven't talked to God and you haven't dealt with your flesh, you get to Jericho, you're not going to hear the voice of God. In fact, when God talks to you, you're going to say, that ain't him. That ain't him. Come on. It's the same voice that talked to Gideon. Remember Gideon? How are you going to win this battle? Well, first of all, you got too many men. Really, God? Amen. I got 32,000, and, and they look, there are a multitude out there. This ain't a lot. I want you to send everybody home that's afraid. All right, that's probably one or two. No, that's about 22,000. All right, 10,000, God. We can still do this thing, God. We got 10,000. My God. We got 10,000. You, you talk about a church losing people. Gideon's church lost over th two-thirds of his congregation. They all went home. We'd, we'd fold up shop. In fact, that's what some of us have done. We've seen people leave, leave here. And, and, and you've got an ad to, well, well, they're leaving. And, and what's wrong with the church? There ain't nothing wrong with the church. We just need to get close to God. You understand? We need to just seek our God. And so 22,000 leave. And, and God, God has the audacity to say to him, too many. And so you, you, know, you know what happens. He, he takes him down the water and... 9,700 are sent home, and now he's got 300. My God, this just doesn't work out. And then they go over to the weapons wagon because <laughs> there's got to be some secret weapons there. I mean, God, he, secret weapons, God's got to have them. And you know, take, throw the tarp off, and there's torches and pitchers and trumpets. Oh, my God. You see, that's what happens at Jericho. When God speaks to us, He's never going to fit into how this world operates. Come on. You understand? But we haven't been to Gilgal. We haven't gone to Bethel. We sure aren't going to listen to God at Jericho. We start saying some stuff to us that crazy. At least in our mind, it's crazy. But it's that Jericho that that happens. My God. Well, brothers and sisters, you understand, we're, we're here for a reason. Some of, us, we, we, some of us have lost the purpose. The purpose is more than saving your hide. The purpose is to impact this world for our king, for his kingdom. For our Messiah. For the one that's coming for people. We are a part of a kingdom that cannot be destroyed. Amen. Daniel saw the kingdoms of this world. The world powers. And there was a stone hewn out of a mountain that came down off that mountain. And it smashed those kingdoms to pieces. That's the kingdom we're a part of. And that's what we don't see today. We're not seeing that. We're not understanding what we're a part of. Are you with me? Is this, is this all right? If I, if I hurt your feelings tonight, are you still with me? Are you tired? Are you wore out? I'm, I'm going to quit in just, just a few moments. Just a few moments. Just, just hang out with me. Ask Jesus to give you some strength to just receive. So at Jericho, flesh is never going to be impressed with what God says. Never. Never. I would say never, never, never. Let, let me, I mean, just let me just do something right now. How many would you stand? Would you be willing to stand 
updated. He said, you know what, there's times I believe it must have been God that spoke to me because what he asked me to do was just flat out, in my mind, crazy. Would you stand tonight? Would you stand? I, you know, would you stand? Flat out crazy. And I'm thinking, I mean, just flat out. Look at that. That's, that, that's, that's the majority. And thank you, you may be seated. Now, there's others that didn't stand for whatever reason they chose not to stand. Because I believe that's what God does. But you see, when flesh is running the show, this surely can't be from God. This is crazy. But it's at Jericho that God gives them victory by his hand, by his hand in that city. So we've been to Gilgal, where we've had to deal with the world. We've been to Bethel, where God talks to us. And we talk to God. We've been to Jericho, where God says some stuff. He says some stuff. My God. My God. In fact, he's been talking to some of you. And you're not sure it was his voice. What you need to do is pray. You're not out of the ordinary if he says something that seems foolish to you or foolish to your flesh. You're not out of the ordinary. Praise God. And then they go to the Jordan. And at the Jordan, Elijah the prophet hits the ground, hits the water. It parts, and they go across. And on the other side, within a short time of walking, a chariot comes and swoops down and takes Elijah. And Elijah says, my father, my father. Now, he wasn't his natural father, but that man was a father in the prophetic ministry to him. Hallelujah. And he goes back to the Jordan. And he takes that mantle. We read it tonight. And he hits the water. And he says, where is the Lord God of Elijah? He strikes the water. One man asks the question, where is the Elijah of the Lord God? Because Elijah prayed. And then... The waters divide for Elisha and he crosses over. Do you know what do you know what Jordan literally means? The word Jordan. It means flowing downward. Brothers and sisters, for us to have a Jordan in our life, we've got to go to Gilgal. We've got to make up our mind who we're going to serve. We've got to make it very, very clear whose side we're on in every aspect of our life. And at Bethel, he talks to us. We talk to him. We learn to pray. And it's at Jericho where he starts saying some things to us that just doesn't fit in with flesh. I remember Brother Carlton Clark being here some years ago, back in that's 2008. And I was sitting on a Sunday morning over here in... Uh, I'm sitting there and he's preaching. And this, I, I don't know how to describe it to you other than to say, it's almost like a fear came on me. And the fear was, nothing's going to happen. I literally was confronted with it. It was trying to take over my mind. You see, if it takes over my mind, then I'm going to act what is in my mind, you see, and you do the same thing. That's why the posture in a church, even tonight, it should be praise and faith and believe in God on a Wednesday night to heal young men with that strep throat and amen, give answers, you know. And But this fear grips me. And so after the service, and, and by the way, it was the ending of the service was very, very powerful. God moved on people, things took place. And I was talking with Brother Clark afterwards, and I began to tell, I was a little fearful to tell him because I, I sure didn't want him to think I didn't have any faith. 
you know, and so I'm talking to him about what I felt. And he said to me, he said, I had to deal with the same thing. A fear came to me and I felt nothing was going to happen. Brothers and sisters, there's the voice of God and there's the voice of the enemy. Amen. And you need to be able to discern that voice. Hallelujah. And you need to be able to discern the voice of your God. Amen. That's going to speak to you. Amen. Jordan means a flowing downward. It's when you've been to Gilgal and Bethel and Jericho and you cross the Jordan that there's a flowing downward. The mantle fell to the ground and he picked it up. And he then smote the waters of Jordan. Brothers and sisters, God wants to work amongst us. Why are we so afraid to pray for people? Why do we allow a fear to get a hold of us? Well, it may not work. It's not up to you and me to make it work. It's up to Him. I just need to believe Him. Now, I'm just going to say, a lot of you gravitate to Brother Nowak because you believe that he's going to fix your problem. Let me tell you tonight, Brother Nowak's not going to fix your problem. Now, he can have faith for your problem. But what you have done, whether you realize it or not, you have made Brother Nowak your Messiah. And he's just a messenger. And there are other messengers in this house. Now, I'm not suggesting you shouldn't go ask Brother Nowak to pray with you and ask him to, perhaps God, that God would give him something to speak to you. That's not what I'm saying. But what we can subtly do is now we mix the flesh in there and this person is going to give us the answer. My God. Hallelujah. 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 So what's we all going to do? I've, I've done what I'm supposed to do. I'm just supposed to preach His Word. That's, that's just my job. It's now up to you to respond to it. To take the Word of God, put it in your heart. Amen. To bring forth fruit. Amen. Some 100, some 60, some 30. Amen. I believe. I believe. That in a short time, God can move in this house and change a whole lot of stuff that's going on. May I say to you, I'm just talking about me now, nobody else. Last Sunday, wait a minute, I wasn't here last Sunday. Two Sundays ago, on my way to this house, I said, God, bring somebody brand new into this place. Somebody that's hungry for you. And I, I, I have to be honest, I get a little frustrated and tired dealing with people that ain't hungry for God. You know? They're hungry for a, Mc, a, a Mc, Mc, McDouble or whatever they call them, but they ain't hungry for God. Want me to, they want us to pay their rent or their electricity, but they ain't hungry for God. I get a little tired of that business. God, just bring somebody here that's hungry for you. All right, now this is just two weeks ago. Okay. So I am standing up here teaching Bible study Sunday morning. Probably about quarter to quarter to eleven, and walks a couple. I ain't never seen these people before, never, never seen them. I could, in fact, his name is Roger, and her name is Abby. 
And my God, some team ought to have already contacted him. If you haven't, you're ticking me off. Because you're falling flat down on the job. All right, now, see, I'm back now. I'm, I'm recovering. I'm recovering faster. But they were an answer to my prayer. And it was so fast. You know, I forgot how quick my God can answer a prayer. I'm just telling you, just I was shocked, delighted, excited. I mean, I about fell all over them. Now, we have had other, many other visitors here, many other visitors. But I know what I prayed for that Sunday morning. And they walked in, and they walked in the door. Hallelujah. Now, brothers and sisters, let's start praying in these ways. Not just praying prayers, oh God. Give me strength and grace and wisdom. I, I need all that. But God, bring somebody into my life today. Somebody that's hungry for you. God, bring somebody into my life today that you want to demonstrate yourself to them. God, bring them into my life. But staying in this room. We can we can hang around in, in Egypt and our families won't be saved. And there's a great possibility that we won't be saved. Or we can make up our mind who we're gonna serve. Spend some time in Gilgal. Get it right. Know who our God is and know who our salvation is. And move down to Bethel and just at Bethel, just talk to God and have God talk to us. And then we'll find our way in Jericho. And he's saying strange stuff to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we cross the Jordan River. And there's a flowing downward of the Spirit of God into our lives. To use us to impact people. Hallelujah. Because that's what it's all about. And it ain't about, about anybody being exalted here. It's about impacting people and bringing them into the kingdom of God. Can we just talk to him right now? Can we just talk to God right now? Just talk to him. He loves you. He loves us. He wants to work through us. He's a God of power and might. He's a God of ability. Hallelujah. We are his people. We are special. We are unique to God. We really are. You are important to him. You're wonderful. Praise God. Oh, God, help us to see God. See what we're supposed to do. My God, every day, every day, God. Every day, God. Not just once in a while. but Every day. My God. My God, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus, to shake off lethargy, to shake off that spirit of slumber that would come against me, that spirit that I find it so easily to sit down with, oh, God, when it ought to make me very uncomfortable. Oh, Jesus, let's just talk to him. Let's just talk to the Master. Just talk to him. You see, you are people that have been filled with the Holy Ghost. You have supernatural power within. Years ago, I memorized the scripture, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. And there's a power working in us, and it is a power of God. But we got to go to Gilgal. We got to spend time at Bethel. And he starts talking to us stuff. We go to the Jordan, cross that Jordan. The Spirit of God flows downward. We'll never be the same. Never. Oh, God. You got the Holy Ghost. You got, do you remember 
how it was when you got the Holy Ghost. You start talking to people. You didn't know anything and you start talking to them. Now we know a lot and we don't talk to anybody. We keep it to ourselves. Why? Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Oh, God, we help us, oh, God, to believe you, God, to believe you. Why don't you just pray for somebody? Just find somebody to pray and really pray for them. Don't go through those now I lay me down to sleep prayers, but actually pray for them. Actually pray for them. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, by your spirit, my God. By the spirit of the living God. By the spirit of the living God. By the spirit of the living God. I believe you right now, God. In this room right now. Men and women of faith. Men and women that believe you, God. Men and women, oh God, that want you to work in their lives and work in the lives of other people. You're in, they're in this house tonight. They may have come in, their body may be tired. But oh God, your spirit in them is not tired. You can work through them tonight. Hallelujah. Why don't you pray something into your brother and sister in Christ. Why don't you pray the spirit of God into them. Hallelujah. Why don't you pray, amen, something miraculous into their life. Amen. Why don't you let God talk to you? Let Him speak to you. Speak through you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, God. We've gone to Bethel, God. We're going to Bethel. We're talking to God. We're talking to God at Bethel, God. Talking to you. Been to Gilgal, Father. My God, at Jericho, you're saying things to us that our flesh, oh God, does not want to receive, doesn't want to believe. But, oh God, it's not by my flesh, oh God, but it's by your spirit. It's not by my abilities, it's by your spirit, God. <clears throat> 